Hellebores are becoming a very popular shade plant. And one of the reasons people want to grow them is that they bloom for such a long time. But did you know that hellebores don't even have petals? What I'm going to do in this video is show you the details of a hellebore flower. And I'll explain why they seem to flower for such a long time. It turns out that hellebores really only bloom for a couple of weeks. But they put on a good show for many months. And that's really why people want them in their garden. I did a little experiment for this video. I went out and cut a flower off of one of my hellebores. And I cut another one off a couple days later, and a couple days after that, and a couple days after that. And I have a sequence of five different flowers. This shows the progression of a flower that's just starting to open, right up to the point when it's finished. And this whole sequence took place in about 10 days. What surprises many people is that the purple petals that you think you're looking at aren't really petals. To understand the hellebore better, let's go and have a look at the parts of a normal flower. You can see that this flower has large purple petals, and that's the thing that attracts us to it. At the base of the petals is something called the sepals. Now normally the sepals are enclosing the petals when it's a bud. They're protecting those petals. And as the flower opens, the petals grow and become larger, and they're the most colorful part of the flower. In the center, we have a pistil, that's where the seeds develop, and we have some stamens. And the tip of the stamens is the anther, and that's where the pollen develop. Now let's go have a look at a hellebore flower. This is the first flower in the sequence. You can see that it's just opening up. It's not fully developed yet. Now this does seem to have purple petals, but in fact, what you're looking at here are purple sepals. They enclose the flower and they're the outer part of the bud. Now it might seem like this is kind of an unimportant point, but it's actually really important for gardeners to understand these sepals. And sometimes we call these bracts. When flowers have colorful bracts like this, they stay on the plant a long time and they become the most beautiful part of the flower. Because they stay on the plant for so long, gardeners think that these things are blooming for several months. But in fact, the real flower is deep inside the center. Let's have a close-up look and see what we're looking at here. Right in the center, you'll see five small green stems coming out. These are all part of the pistil. Around the pistil, you have these small white balls. They're undeveloped stamens. They're kind of curled up right now, and they haven't really fully developed yet. A few of them are just starting to stick up, but the pollen on these aren't quite ready yet. The pistil, on the other hand, is ready to be receptive for pollen. So it actually develops a few days ahead of the stamens. And the reason for this is that it increases the likelihood of getting pollen from another flower and being cross-pollinated. And that usually leads to much healthier seedlings down the road. Now around the stamens, you'll see these funny little tube structures. They're sort of green and they're starting to get a little purple in there. These are called nectaries. And in fact, these are the petals of this flower. Instead of the normal shaped petals, the hellebore develops these tube-like structures and they contain nectar. So the nectar is attracting insects to this flower in the hopes that it'll get pollinated. These little tubes though, are really the petals of this flower. Now a couple days later, the flower will look like this. You can now see that the stamens are becoming developed and about half of them are sticking up and that pollen is starting to be fully developed and ready for an insect to take it to another flower. The nectaries are still there. It's still attracting insects. In three or four days, the flower will look more like this. You can see that the stamens now have fully developed. And in fact, most of them have fallen off. They've done their job and the flower no longer needs them. You can even see a couple spaces there between the nectaries and those are probably areas where the nectaries have already fallen off as well. 
They're getting old and they're going to drop off the plant. Here's the flower a few days later and you can see that all of the stamens are gone. Most of the nectaries are gone. There's a couple left still attached. And if we have a look at the pistil, it's starting to change color. It's going dark and it's starting to swell. So this flower obviously was pollinated and the seeds are now developing inside the pistil. A few days more along the sequence and the flower looks like this. Now the sepals are still colorful at this point, but they've lost some of the coloration. They're starting to get paler. The interesting thing about the hellebore is that these sepals now stay attached to the plant throughout the full seed development process, which is going to take several weeks. As that process happens, the sepals continue to lose their coloration. They start taking on a more greenish color. They actually contain chlorophyll, that's the green color, and they're able to photosynthesize just like the rest of the leaves on the plant. But you can see in the center, the seed pods are now developing very nicely and they'll continue to get larger and larger. And once they're ripe, they'll split open and the seeds will fall out. Now let's go back and have a closer look at these nectaries, the true petals of the flower. I've collected flower heads from three different plants to show you the variation that you can get. The one on the top is the one we've been looking at. And you can see that the ripe nectaries are a nice dark reddish color. The one on the lower left are almost a white with purple centers and green along the outside. On the right side we have a completely different one and the nectaries in this one are completely green. So just like petals on a regular flower you get variations in the color in the size and shape of these nectaries. The next time you look at a hellebore flower, have a really close look at the center. They're actually quite spectacular. And unfortunately, most people don't get down close enough to have a good look. Now, would you like to get some free hellebore seedlings? Well, I put a video together to show you where these might be. Remember the seeds that are developing this plant. They fall down right underneath the mother plant. If you have some hellebore plants that have been in the garden for a number of years, I can pretty much bet that there will be seedlings under that mother plant. The problem is that the seedlings don't grow until they get enough light or until a gardener is smart enough to go find them. And the video I put together will show you where they are what they look like, and what to do with them to grow them into large, healthy plants. I'll put a link to that video in the top right-hand corner. I hope you enjoy your hellebores.